All right, let's get started. Um, good morning, my name is Nicole Jensen. I'm the CEO of Real MLS. Thanks for joining us on this wonderful Thursday morning. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any questions for us, for me, um, or any of my staff, you can type them in the Q&A section and Jeremy's sort of monitoring that. And I'll actually be um, hopefully getting to questions at the end just to keep them sort of um, at the end of the presentation. Last time this thing took me about an hour and um, I'm telling you that I hope that that is not the case. Um, this time I'm gonna try to get through it in a half an hour. Um, the, the first one was a little uh, feature content rich. So hopefully we'll get through it uh, much quicker today. So um, let's see if I can get my screens to advance. That would be great. Here we go, we'll do this. All right, good deal. Um, welcome, if, if anybody attended the broker breakfast yesterday, um, some of that content is gonna be presented um, here today just because we felt like it was important to get out to the whole membership. And so this first part though, the first 10 minutes or so is different content. So if you um, wanna check out after 10 minutes, that would be um, fine too. So this is our uh, market snapshot. It sort of just is a very high level view of where we're at in the market. Um, we are seeing a little bit of ease in the um, actual um, inventory, which is good. We're up to a 1.3 month supply and our median sales is here at 300, a little over 300,000. So this is um, something that we share out uh, monthly now and I, I hope that you guys all find it valuable. Some people have been asking about our membership numbers, so I thought I would share this as well. Um, we all, we're nearing, we're actually over now because this is the June snapshot. We're over 10,500 members now. Um, as you well know, we're in the middle of dues uh, collection. So we're actually right now collecting 2021, 2022 dues. And so we will have um, people that will fall off because of that. But we are, we've are we been seeing on average 160 new Realtor members and MLS members a month over the last six to nine months. So um, it's been fast and furious. And and um, we don't know, you know, if, if it will ease. Like, I think this month there are fewer joining. So I think it's just starting to sort of not see that kind of type of growth, but we are growing as a community. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit as well too. So a little growth is good. Um, hopefully it'll be more sustained growth for now for our membership numbers and maybe not so many, um, you know, 180 members, 190 members a month is a lot of new members to onboard and get them fully trained and, and really have them um, understand all of our rule set and stuff. So it's been a little bit of a struggle. All right, so the CEO report. Um, this is a good place to start. It just sort of gives you a high level of everything that's going on in our world. Um, so I start with the MLS. We are still amping up a partnership with Rental Beast, which I talked about in our last one. Um, it's taking us a little time just because we want to add them to an SSO so that you don't have to log into Rental Beast separately. Um, but we do have a go live date in mid-August for that. So look forward to that. It's going to be a great member benefit and it really highlights the importance of your place in the rental market. Although it might not be the most lucrative or the largest, you know, like where you focus your time, it is important that you also have relationships with those people that um, are currently renting. So please, please take advantage of that when you see it. And we, you'll, you'll know it's, uh, you'll definitely know when we go live with that. Um, I, I have spoken about this a little bit. We have entered a um, shared service agreement, if for lack of a better term, with a group called Market, um, M-A-R-K-T. M -A -R -K -T. It, it does not, uh, we didn't misspell it. It actually is spelled that way. Um, and so this is with a couple of MLSs in the nation, actually. It's with Arizona Regional MLS in Phoenix and with um, Mark or Metro MLS in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So it's kind of an interesting partnership because we're not contiguous, they're nowhere near us, um, and we're not merging with them. We are, we are simply sharing services with them to try to provide you, our members, better service. And so you'll, you'll hear more about that. I just wanted to mention it here so that you know we're excited about it because we're able to, with this partnership, um, pull some things back in house that have sort of been outsourced for a while and, and have better contact with our members. So um, that's, a, that's a great development. And like I said, you'll hear more and more about that as the time goes by. We have been reviewing showing platforms. Everybody was sort of in a flurry about that about six months ago. And Kimberly and I have spent, we sort of had, we said, uh, joked and said, there's gonna be a syndrome called 
showing uh, platform fatigue syndrome because we've seen now 11 showing platforms. Uh, we have not moved off center. We're still with showing service, as you well know. Um, that merger has not, or acquisition rather, um, has not yet been finalized. And that's why we're sort of still in a holding pattern. But I will let you know that we are, have done our due diligence on looking at all showing platforms in the ecosystem. And so we're well positioned um, should there come a moment and a time when we're ready to move forward with a different platform. So please know that we are very engaged in that and we are um, sitting good. Um, as many of you had heard, Wayne Weatherington's uh, retirement occurred in March, April timeframe. And since then, and we miss Wayne, we had a nice little uh, party going away party for him. And as you guys know, he was a 31 year member of our team. And so we can't thank Wayne enough. Um, we have uh, brought on Melissa Alberto, who is here with us. She's been here since the beginning of May and she's doing a fabulous job. She does training and technology support and many of you have talked to her and she is happy to come out to your office as well, just like Dana and Jeremy. She is another member of our training team, so please engage her and welcome her to um, Real MLS for me. Oh, we are building that member dashboard for you. There have been some hiccups because of some things that we want to put in place, but we're still building that with NEFAR so that you'll be able to go to one place where everything will be there for you. You won't have to go bounce around and go find links and such. It'll all be contained in one place for you. Um, I'm thinking like, early fall for that, I'm hoping. Um, we're doing some um, new member onboarding application stuff that needs to be done ahead of it because it all sort of goes hand in hand, um, which is why it works so well. But because of that, we've had, again, just a little delay. So please, um, when you see that, I hope that you guys really appreciate that having all of your tools for NEFAR and Real MLS all on one page. We have brought back our office staff. Um, we have a hybrid off in office schedule, if you will. So that some work at home some days and some work here some days. And that's sort of going to be the way we go forward for now. Always, always having the you know ultimate and um, wonderful customer service that we provide you um, at the forefront of that. Um, so we have not yet opened the doors um, into our building yet. And I know that some of you have been sending new members over and such. We're not accepting members inside of the NEFAR and Real MLS building on um, here, the main building, um, but that will come. And so just watch for communications. Until then, we've been onboarding people for a year and a half almost online, and I think we've gotten rather good at it. So please keep sending um, new members to the, you know, to do it, to fill out their application and join us online. And, and we'll see you soon. We're doing in-person MLS trainings in the front of the building as well, but just those middle doors back to the staff area is not yet available. Um, we're still working on Real MLS University. Jeremy thinks maybe September timeframe, and I hope you guys are excited about that. It's sort of like a all things MLS tract that you can do for education purposes. And then a few things that we're looking at, um, Domus Analytics is something that is for you to look at the state of the market, all of the statistical compilations that you might need. Um, Earnest is another uh, third party vendor that would provide you the ability to get earnest dollars um, electronically sent that that is not penetrable by um, you know people that want to do harm and so it's a really cool interface that i've been looking at for a while um, and then always we want to do something in the realtor safety people ask me all the time what we you know if there's a, a technology integration we could do so we're looking at that as well um, and then finally the data integrity policy which is what i'm going to spend about 20 minutes on today so We'll go over that. Industry-wide, um, just a few things. Back in November, um, and I, or Mark, sorry, not November. What year is it? Um, May, back in May in the, at the DC meetings, if you will, but we weren't in DC, the mid-year meetings. Um, the standards work group actually came up with some best uh, best practices and they're there on your screen. It's nothing that we aren't already doing. So there's really like very little concern um, to be had with those there. We, we already inform you of all of the policy updates. Um, they do want the RISO web API to be the primary way we get data out into the world, which is a very technology uh, driven 
thing. They want both the staff and the leadership of the MLS to have education, which we absolutely do and already have it in place. And we already have a separate board of directors and we communicate with you like today. So um, none of those work standards uh, for MLSs um, are, we're already doing all of them. And so no worries. Um, they did do two actions in May, which is to require addresses, which we already do. Um, and so that's more so for those non-disclosure states. That was more of a big deal for them. And then um, the uh, prohibition of sold price. And so again, we're a disclosure state. So they, these two things that were the major May board of direction, uh, board of directors action in, in, at NAR were not really material to our marketplace as they might've been for others. I'm gonna touch briefly on the NAR DOJ update. Um, and basically, I, I come to you and say we're sort of in a holding pattern. As many of you have read, um, the DOJ pulled out of a settlement that they had. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. There we go. Um, they pulled out of a settlement with NAR about a couple of weeks ago. Um, and since we have had meetings with NAR giving us updates and we're just sort of in a holding pattern because this is sort of an unprecedented situation where they were they were they um, had a, a signed, sealed and delivered settlement and the DOJ pulled back and said, um, that is not what we wanna do at this time and actually canceled the settlement. So now we're sort of in the um, discussion phase again with the DOJ. And, and as we receive information, as NAR has information, they will for sure be bringing it to you, the membership, and to us um, as association executives and MLS execs. Um, the good news is Jacksonville, um, we, I just saw an article on Florida Realtors and it really spoke to me, so we shared it out, but it says that 22% of homeowners um, moved into our market area since 2017, pardon. pardon. Um, that's kind of a big deal. And somebody said, well, it's military or it's this and that, but these are homeowners. And so, although, you know, there are military families that do own their homes here, um, these, this is all homeowners and that's 22% have actually come from another place here. And we have a good life. I mean, who wouldn't? We're number three, which is amazing. So Las Vegas, Phoenix, and then Jacksonville. So um, it's a it's a big deal, and that's why we're seeing the growth that we're seeing. On the heels of that, we're also experiencing, as you all very well know, an inventory, um, you know, <laughs> supply issue, as well as a housing supply crisis nationwide. And so that's sort of um, a big topic uh, nationwide with like, how are we going to approach the housing supply um, issue? We basically don't have enough rooftops to how, if everybody wanted to have home ownership, um, we lack those rooftops to be able to allow that. And so we're approaching it, NAR, and all, I mean, all boots on the ground as to how we can be creative and think outside the box to try to ease that, that supply crisis. So just stay tuned to it. And really, you guys are, you guys are engaged and you're in, you know, um, important places and you need to do what you can do and, and try to think of ways that we can all work together as a nation to try to fix this problem. Um, and then the Florida Realtors, and I just, I signed this yesterday at the broker breakfast. They are having, they have a petition and everybody should feel compelled to participate in that petition effort. It's housing funds for housing. And I'm not the expert on this, so I'm not going to act like I am, but it is an important initiative where the housing funds for affordable housing are being used for other things. And they need this petition to be signed by the end of the year and 1 million people have to sign it so that we can get a ballot initiative to change that so that we can actually use housing funds for housing. And then finally, there is um, more information at ourflorida.com on an 850 million package to ease tenant and landlord issues with um, payments of rents and your mortgage payments on your rentals. So please go to ourflorida.com if you want to know more about that information. That was a lot in a very little time, um, but I thought those were all important topics. On to um, our data integrity policy. So I thought yesterday I started, and if anybody was at Broker Breakfast, um, now is the time where you don't really, if you've already seen this, unless you wanna stick around and ask me more questions, and I'm sorry to be repetitive, but I had to get this out to everyone. So um, on, on the screen is really the definition of, of one of the things that MLS is to everyone, which is a facility for the orderly 
um, compilation and dissemination of listing information so participants may better serve their, their clients, so that you may better serve your clients and the public. So that is one of the many things MLSs do. We also get your listings out to third party sites. We also make sure that cooperation and compensation is in place and all of these things. But one of the most important things we do is on the screen. And so from that, um, our MLS has sort of, uh, this is our statement. We advance a healthy marketplace by keeping our members and their clients in the know. And it sort of differentiates um, really just a database of listings from an MLS. And the one thing that does that is that we all do things the same. That we have a set of rules, a set of standards, a set of policy that says we all count square footage this way. We all, you know, go active within 24 hours. We all do A, B, and C. And that really is what an MLS is. It's all about you all coming together and selling each other's listings. So in doing so, you keep yourselves and your clients in the know, which is a campaign we introduced to you back, um, I think really on the last webinar. We've since put a button on our website, which is on the screen here, and there are a ton of content there for you to use with your sellers and buyers. This is not just for you. It's just it's not just a message from me to you, our members. It's for you to use with your sellers and buyers to explain to them how important the MLS is and what it does for them. Them as consumers because we need to we need to scream this message from the rooftops people because our way of business and this beautiful thing called the multiple listing service that we're all a part about is a little under attack right now thus the the settlement with the DOJ not being executed fully and even an executive order by the White House coming out looking at our marketplace at our you know ability to cooperate with one another um, there are talks of it not being good for consumers. There are talks of it being anti-competitive. And we believe strongly that the MLS is actually both the opposite. We think it's very good for consumers, very good, and very good for you, our members, to be able to get together. But we have to do things correctly so that we can look at everybody and look at them in the eye and say, we have all the listing content and everyone has the same right to it. So please, please use these um, these assets that we've provided you under the in the no tab to explain the importance of the MLS. Um, this next screen, when we started talking about um, compliance, if you will, and data integrity, um, it was one of those things where like, well, how bad is the problem? Really was what was asked. And so this screen shows you um, really the types and the, the number of errors that we are seeing in the database. Um, new and modified so these are all the listings that have either been entered or touched in some way saved um, in the last six months about 182,000. and of those 16,000 had some form of error and the, it runs the gamut these are all errors so it's comprehensive but it's about nine percent of listings um, actually see an error here are some examples of where those numbers lie like just the incorrect selection for pools um, uh, you know if you have an in-ground pool and it's in the backyard, then that's an in-ground pool. But if you select in-ground pool and it's one that's three miles away in the community center, that is not good data. That is actually, there's an enumeration or a field selection that is called community pool. And that is the correct selection for a community pool. So just things like that, that we have, we constantly are sending out correction notices. And these are some of the numbers from the last six months again. The other, uh, one of the major things that we're really trying to um, write, if you will, are those listings that are never exposed to the marketplace. Um, and it is doing everyone an injustice and it's a fair housing issue. So there have been 1700 listings that have closed um, with zero days on the market in the first six months of this year. And that, that you know, it equates to 200, 300 listings a month. 
that have not been made available to the entire marketplace. And it's a disservice to not only those that were not allowed to see that listing, to be able to make that offer on that listing, um, it's a disservice to your fellow brokers who are, you're in a broker cooperative with, who you say, I get, I'm going to get together and sell properties with you. And they have a buyer and they're not able to go and see that house. So that buyer is looking at that agent going, why didn't you get me into that property? You're my realtor. Aren't you the definitive source? Well, for 300 listings a month, that wasn't the case. And it wasn't possible for those buyers and those buyer's agents. And this is one of the main things that we really need to fix. So in doing so, I bring you the data integrity policy. And it's a fancy term. It's a, it's a good words, kind words and softer words for a compliance policy. Um, because we can no longer operate in a fashion with 10,500 members on begging everyone to do the right thing. We've been doing that for years and asking you to do, you know, do right and fix this and fix that. And it's come to a point where the, the behavior is affecting home buyers and it's affecting your fellow realtors and it's really become like the degradation of professional professionalism in our marketplace. Um, and so for that reason, the MLS board of directors and uh, with my complete and total support um, and probably guidance um, decided that this was really important to do at this time in this current marketplace. And it's probably needed more now than it ever has been before simply due to the lack of inventory as well. So if you click on the data integrity policy under resources, it brings you to this page. And I'm going to focus on this top piece. So that, that the last screen with the red box, these are the words that are in that box. And the most important words on this page are equal access to all listings by all people and to advance a healthy marketplace and increase professionalism. So those are the things, that is why we have this data integrity policy. It is not about money. It's not about being punitive. It's not about a gotcha. It's not about any of those things. It is about the fact that we all need to do everything the same so that we can have a healthy marketplace, that buyers and sellers feel equally represented by us and that we raise the professionalism of our industry so that people believe that we actually do have the best interest of the consumer in mind at all times. With that, this whole page is dedicated to it. The policy goes into effect August 1st, um, and that's why we're out in force. If you would like us to come to your office, we're happy to. Jeremy, Nicole, Kimberly, Dana, um, can even Melissa could come and present this for you to your agents if you would like us to. Um, and so, and we are recording this by the way, so you can watch it later um, or you can share it to your members. We'll be putting it out on the website, on the Facebook page. Um, so please look for that. Um, but in this uh, tool set, all of these buttons are here. The top button that's called the MLS, uh, Real MLS Data Integrity Policy Toolkit it are all of these assets, all of this content in one PDF. That is what that top button is, this one here, the, the toolkit. Um, so I'm not going to show you that. Rather, I'm going to delve into each one. So the first one is the Real MLS Data Integrity Policy Summary. And it's basically an executive summary. Oh, we have the wrong images up on this. The first page is wrong. Um, but it's basically an executive summary that goes over every single piece of this. It goes into coming soon status, the due process. So if you like reading about policy, that is the document for you. The next one is the FAQ here. So some people like to say, okay, what are the you know the questions um, that we that I could think to ask? And that's like, what is this policy? Why do we need it? What are some of the things that I can be fined for? How can I help? How can I help make my marketplace, a, you know, the, the definitive source for listing data? So please look at that. Um, and this, I will mention right here and again later that all of the data, all of the fines for all of the data integrity policy go to the NIFAR Charitable Foundation. They do not go to Real MLS. So you, they, we will collect it and then we will donate it to the NIFAR Charitable Foundation. This is not about money. We do not want money. 
Um, and somebody yesterday at the broker breakfast said, what about education in lieu of? And we will be discussing that going forward. But I see that being something that would be like a final step if you, you know, maybe um, if you want to take education in lieu of half of the fine or something, but we're going to dis we're going to discuss all options here because the point is not the money, but sometimes you have to take in this this step to change behavior, especially when you have so many people in this member churn, where we have so many new members coming in that don't learn the rules, and you have a duty to educate yourselves on these rules to operate in the MLS and be in our marketplace. You have a duty to yourself, to your broker, and to your clients to be well informed on all policy mo uh, models. So I'm going to show you those two. Um, Jeremy, because some people learn visually, created a quick guide, if you will, and it is a very graphical, graphical representation of this policy. So this is sort of like a um, a quick guide, if you will. There's there are the three violations with the highest fines are there. A definition of a showing, because remember, and I I mentioned this yesterday, but coming soon listings cannot be shown, and we've actually added initial boxes to the coming soon addendum so that you can have the conversation with your clients. The coming soon listings cannot be shown, and they cannot have an offer presented. They sign off and say, I will not take offers until I go active. Because coming soon is not on the market, people. It is a pre-marketing status. And it's important because if you take an offer in a coming soon status, you basically have committed inequality of housing to all of the other people that could have possibly wanted to buy that house and didn't have the opportunity. You have to allow everyone the opportunity to buy the property. And that is the requirement. And it, and it clearly states that you must go into the active status, allow other people to have exposure to it, and then you can present your offers. And your sellers agree to that in the addendum. Um, clear cooperation, the one business day of, within one business day of marketing, you must submit to the MLS the listing. And then finally, the far right column is the most frequent violation. So this is a real like high level um, view of the rules and regulations at a glance. So this is a graphical representation of the fine structure. So on the far left, the citation and violate citation violations, pardon, are $50. And those are things that you can correct. And that is what we want. We are going to send you a, a correction notice like we always do and say, hey, you have this wrong or we compared it to the tax data and this is incorrect. And you have the 24 hours to fix it. So you go in, you fix the data, which 95, 97% of you do. Within 24 hours, you're like, thank you, I didn't know. You fix your data and we're done here. And there is no fine. It's only if you ignore us that we will, we will apply the fine to your account. So please just be responsive to those correction notices and, and fix the data. The second column, major violations is $200. And those are the missed times. Those are the kinds of fines or the kinds of violations that you can't go back in time and fix because you've already, you're already late getting the listing data, you know, the listing into the MLS. Um, you, you, the, it's so egregious that it created harm to somebody. It, I, 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 so there, those are kind of major violations. Um, the coming soon violations are, this is the new column. Everything else on here was already in place, but the coming soon violations, we added a new uh, fine level and that fine level is $1,000. And that is because of the fair housing piece of the ability to, when you take a, a coming soon listing and you go from, from coming soon directly to pending and you don't allow the whole marketplace of which you are a part to look at that listing and to have that opportunity, um, that creates harm to other buyers. It creates harm to other realtors and thus the increased um, fine level. If you do it again, if you after you have done it once and we said, please do not do that, here's your fine. If you do it a second time, it's 1% of the sale price, up to $15,000. And the reason 
for that high of a fine is because that is how important it is for that not to occur in our marketplace. Um, and so please, please, please stop taking coming soon listings directly to pending. You need to expose them to the marketplace. Um, and then the final one is do not share your password. That has been in place, a $1,000 fine for sharing your password. We have been kind and said, please stop doing that. And we can no longer say that. You need to not share your password to the MLS system. Everybody has their own password. And if you have an assistant or somebody who helps you, we're happy to get them their own. Um, and we do have a system that can tell where you are and where your another login is. And we will begin fining for the abuse of that uh, login credentials. I'm getting near the end. Here is an important piece. This is the process by which if you disagree with our fine, you have due process. You have a process by which you can apply for a waiver. And if you don't like the decision of the waiver administrative review, then you can apply for a actual um, hearing from amongst your peers. So all of these things, um, are, it's an important thing that you understand that like our decisions and the decisions that we find you don't, you know, you have the right to, to plead, your, plead your case. Um, and so just so you know um, that there is that, that ability and it's an important part of this that you feel that you have that the that the process is fair and that you've been given a fair chance to for people to understand your side and then finally um, the real mls policy manual and the rules and regulations these are the two policies that you need to familiarize yourselves with so that none of the rest of this happens um, and inside of the policy manual itself is this appendix a and it also has um, the forms that you need to use if you want to request a waiver or request a hearing. Um, so in the, and I'm going to go back to show you again, the um, real MLS policy manual, that one at the top of the red box, inside of that in Appendix A, this is where the, the guts of this policy exist. And that's where you need to visit to really read about the details of it. We've also put these request forms for the waiver and the hearing under the forms and info section inside of the MLS for ease of access to them. Um, and these are the examples of the form. The important part and why I'm showing you these is that both your signature, if you get a fine, and your managing broker or what we call a participant, um, or your designated realtor, the AORs call them, um, has to, they, you both have to sign this form. And that's so that your broker has oversight of what's going on with the violations. Um, because ultimately they are responsible for the listings and everything. So, um, and then finally, just to go back to, from where we came, is that all of this is about advancing a healthy marketplace by keeping you, our members, and your clients in the know. And I hope that you all understand that from the bottoms of our hearts, we do not want to find anyone. We just want good data and we want you to treat each other fairly and we want you to treat your consumers fairly. And that is why we have um, put this policy in place. So at this time, I will see, It's I went a little long. It's a lot of information. Sorry, it's 1035. Um, if there are any questions, Jeremy, in the, in the Q&A. There are no questions now, but it is now time to ask questions if anybody has any. Um, Glenda did say that when you were talking about coming soon that she feels that they're cheating the, uh, the sellers as well as the buyers when they do uh, uh, zero days on the market. I, I would agree with that because I, I truly believe that if a property is not fully exposed to the marketplace, um, how do we know that we actually attained the fair market value for that property, right? And some people say, well, what if my seller's fine with it um, without going to the market? Well, you have agreed as a member of this broker cooperative, this MLS, this multiple listing service, to participate with other people and so that's why you it's important to have that conversation um, about the in the note process that i am a realtor member i'm a member of the mls or what i like to call broker cooperative and we all share listings with one another 
And if you want my services to help you sell your property, we have to put it in the MLS so that we can all get together and bring you the fair market value of that house. And so it's part of who you are. It's part of the, your commitment to this industry and to creating a fair and equitable and healthy marketplace. I do not see any questions. I'm looking, so Jeremy, anything uh, you see or are we good? We are yeah. good, I don't see any. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Um, and just like, just again, I wanna remind everybody, um, you can call us. And we would be happy to come out to your offices. We, we, you know how to get a hold of me. Here's all my information, including my cell phone. Um, you, Nicole at Real MLS. You can reach out to services at Real MLS. If you want to have Jeremy or, you know, Jeremy at Real MLS, you know how to get a hold of us. We are here for you. Um, we want to come and talk to you. Please let us know if we can help you understand this policy better. This is the first version of this, right? We're going to live and we're going to learn. And there might be obviously updates to it. So this is okay. not all set in stone forever. Rather, I got a last question here. Yeah. Um, are you in danger of a fine if you get and accept an offer the same day you put the property on the market? Um, I don't think that you're in, in fear of a fine absolutely, because you've done your due diligence. You went active. I would argue that if you get that offer that first day that I would say to that offer, I'm going to let everybody make their offers for 24 hours and we're taking highest and best tomorrow or something. I mean, that would be my way of counseling my seller. Why don't we let this thing marinate for 24 hours and then we'll look at offers at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, see what we get. I mean, that is the kind of due diligence that you need to do for your clients and explain to them the importance of exposure to the marketplace. The MLS is the marketplace. And that is where all of this really that that's the important piece, right? And it's your role to explain the importance of the marketplace and exposure to it. So I can't tell you how to operate in that case. I mean, you did go active. You have sufficed our rules. If I say, show me the contract and it came in on the day you went active, fine. You know, but at the end of the day, you have 10,000 other people out here with buyers that may have offered more. And so that's what that's the important part is to make sure you know that you've done the best you can, the best service you can provide to your seller. And I feel strongly the only way to do so is to let everybody have access to that listing. So hopefully, you know, I mean, this is a market driven pr uh, problem because we for those of us who have been around a while, we remember the 2000s where we had three times or gosh, 10 times the number of listings that we have now. And we would have begged for a market like this. And you guys are exhausted, I'm sure, from operating in it. So I feel for you and I do not take your jobs lightly. I don't know how you guys do what you do. Um, and we're just here to try to make the market work, right? I mean, that's all, we're just really trying to create a healthy marketplace. So um, talk to your brokers, they are there for you to counsel you in those times where you're saying like, what should I do with this? What do I do now? We're here for you, um, so please reach out. And I thank you all for being here today. I hope you've uh, garnered a couple of, of things that you didn't know before, and please let us know how we can help you. Thanks everyone.